But welcome you guys, this is Scotty and you're watching Unfiltered and I have my first guest here from Chasing Dallas, King Kane. And um, we're here just to sit down and talk about what he got going on and the show and anything else he's willing to talk about. So how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm Gucci. Uh, really happy. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for reaching out. I'm excited. I'm here to answer anything you want to know <laughs> and, uh, you know, give you any exclusive tea if I had any. Okay, well, um, first of all, I'm a big fan of the whole Chasing Dallas thing. Thank you. And because, um, you know, I watched the Chasing Atlanta show, so when I heard that they were doing Chasing Dallas, I was interested in, you know, as I was telling you when we were walking through, you know, I know somebody on the show already, Charles. Love so, Charles. So, yeah. Um, He's sweet. I was going to support it. Anyway, but then, you know, when they show like the previews and all of that stuff, I'm like, oh, okay, this is going to be cool. And I saw the first episode, and you was probably, besides trying to be unbiased, besides Charles, you was probably the first one that I liked off the reel. Your mm -hmm. attitude and everything like that. So, let's just jump right into what you do as far as your fashion thing. So, what made you get into the fashion? What's the inspiration behind it? Um, I've always loved fashion. Um, I think when I was in 10th grade, that's when I really developed an eye for it. And that's when I really realized how I want to do fashion. I don't want to just be one way. I want to be my way, the King Kane way. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, watching my grandmother when I was young, like get dressed, like my grandma was like so fly and so fierce. Like her everything, she was so detailed with everything. She's a Virgo, just like me. So you already know Virgos are very detailed anyway. Yeah. So um, everything was just precise into the T and to the point, and I just used to watch her, and I just remember helping her, like, "Oh, Granny, you should wear those with that, or you should do this, you should do that." So from a little boy, I, I've always loved fashion. I loved dressing people, and um, it just kind of took off. And you know, I'm just very grateful for where I'm at and where I'm going. Because I'm definitely not where I want to be. Let uh -huh. me say that. Me neither am I. You know, there's always room to grow. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've been in Dallas a year. Okay. So, I feel like now things are starting to speed up. Okay, since you say, okay, so you've been in Dallas for a year. So, mm -hmm. where are you actually from? I'm from Tyler, Texas. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Texas. East Texas. Very small. Not really nothing there. Um, well. You know, but, you know, <laughs> my family is there. And um, I have a couple of friends there as well. Okay, so on the show, you were describing your fashion sense as like 90s type, you know. So mm -hmm. what what is it about the 90s that you love? Because I am a big fan of everything 90s. So what's... I what, think the 90s was just... I always say I wish I was an adult in the 90s versus now because the world is just so crazy now and mm -hmm. so much going on. I just think the 90s was a more simpler time and it was a it was a very peaceful time, I think, too. You know, because when you're young, you have that innocence uh -huh. and then when you get older, you get, you know, things happen and it's almost like, damn, this is life. So the 90s was just, you know, a lot simpler, you know, and... I just, I love the fashion. Like, I watch shows like A Different World and, you know, Steve Urkel, the show, he, uh, Family Matters, um, Full House. You know, I just get so much inspiration from those type of shows, and I just, I just love the 90s. I think it was truly trendy. And, you know, fashion repeats itself every 20 years. Yeah. So, you know, we're in 98 right now. Yeah, everything about the 90s is list everything from the fashion to the entertainment to the music to everything like and I was born in 89 so I pretty much am a 90s baby to yeah. be honest so you know you was born in 89 you look younger than me <laughs> yeah I'm, I'll be 30 really weird no I, my class reunion was just last year so did you go I did okay I did that's cute so <laughs> <laughs> mine is in what 2020 <laughs> you Shout go out to John Tyler High School class of 20. You gonna go to yours? Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm definitely gonna go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I used to be one of the ones that say, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to my class again because I hated everybody in my class for a long yeah. time. But you know, as I got older, everybody went from not liking me to liking me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we, you know, whatever. But no, I think I'm definitely gonna go to mine. Yeah. You should <laughs> say hello to everyone. 
Yeah. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be good. Right. Okay, so what made you want to do the Chase and Dallas show? How did it come about? How did you get contacted? What was the one all be all thing that made you yeah. want to do it? Um, well, I did a show last summer uh, titled Self Made Sisters. Okay. Um, which is also on YouTube, but it didn't really have a big following, you know, it was a, from a new production company uh, or whatever. Let me just, go, to go back, I've always wanted to do reality TV. Okay. I always knew that I was going to do it. I just didn't know that my first platform would be, you know, on YouTube, which is great. But, you know, I always thought, okay, Bravo's going to see me, he's going to see me, somehow I'm going to get in contact. And I still feel that way, you mm -hmm. know. But um, chasing Dallas, I was at an event. Um, me and the cast of Self Made Sisters, we were presenting, we were presenters um, at this award show and Reese G was um, nominated. So, you know, just in the crowd or whatever, he came up and he's like, oh my God, I have to know who you are. Ooh, doo, woo woo, love your outfit, love your look. So we just chopped it up for a little bit. And then he was like, so, you know, I'm doing Chasing Dallas. I would love to have a meeting with you, you know, to go over some details, see where you're at with it. We had the meeting and, you know, it was just a dunzo, you know, like mm -hmm. I was like, I'm, this is something that I want to do, you know, I want to put the King Kane brand to the forefront because I've always had swag and sauce and I've always been different and been me yeah. and it's just that now, you know, it's on a on a bigger platform yeah. than the show I was before. Not to not to low grade self made sisters because it was a great experience, mm -hmm. but chasing Dallas, it was just... Um, I felt it was more like it kind of is show because y'all numbers are kind of good right, right now like for it to be y'all just in y'all what third episode third then? episode so y'all mm -hmm. are over like a hundred thousand views already yeah. like I wish I could do that but, yeah you know y'all in the comments <laughs> yeah so um okay being that you normally when people like join like reality shows or something like that and they have like a brand that's up and coming you know reality TV is normally the first thing people want to jump on be so they can make themselves it's for visibility basically yes so definitely. because you have like a clothing line or do you have like a boutique or something no i have an online boutique okay i have, an online you have a clothing line kinkanclothing.com okay plug that in yeah plug it in. <laughs> so you have a clothing line in an online boutique that you're trying to um you know put out there so right. by you joining Chase and Dallas it brings more visibility to it did you have any qualms about it as far as how it'll make you look or how it'll I really didn't because you know I'm me you get the same me yeah you know so it was like you know I've, like I said from day one either you're gonna fuck with it or you're not mm -hmm. you know and those who do that's cool those who don't that's cool too yeah you know I've never really cared but um, I just knew that I was going to go on there and I was going to do me, be me, speak on how I feel, and just rock out the way that I, I do and did. Okay, so now we got to get into the show. Okay. Okay, so you being on a cast, who would you say that you get along with the best on the show? Um, At the top of your head. Aubrey. Aubrey and I are are good friends. We uh, we formed a true, genuine friendship, you know, and that came from just hanging out outside of cameras, okay. really getting to know each other. So y'all got to know each other. But, I mean, so y'all didn't know each other before the show. No. Okay. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh -uh. I didn't know any of these. I didn't know anybody but Tony. Okay. Uh huh. How are you and Tony, by the way? Um, me and Tony, we're we're in an okay place, you know. Um, we haven't seen each other since. I want to say April. Um, okay. So, you know, just based on, you know, communication that we've had through email and stuff like that, you know, I believe that everything is under the carpet. You know, obviously when you watch your back, feelings do come back and, you know, you feel some type of way, but genuinely I'm, I'm over it, you know? Yeah, because... Because we're watching it now, but it happened for you guys like months ago. months ago. So yeah. it really don't matter to you guys. Now. But it may matter to some people. Because right. sometimes when you watch the shit again, it's mm -hmm. like... Which I was already prepared. Like, I, I knew that, you know, this the, the third episode was coming. So I was just like, damn, 
I know that this is going to get crazy, but, you know, it is what it is. Like, that was how I felt in that moment. I couldn't help but react. And, and one thing about me, like, I can forget about cameras. You know, yeah. like, I don't really care. You know, like, I'm just going to sit there and say what I have to say with or without the cameras. Okay, so is that the only little piece of drama you in? Yes, this that is pretty much it, you know. Um, there's a lot more to me and my story that's going to come out okay. um, as the season goes on. And then you'll also see some shoots that I do and, you know, some other things I do as far as my clothing line. So, so there's, there's, there's going to be more to you than just talking about people turning people into... Medarian, not right. Medarian, so right. Clementine, it, it, <laughs> into oranges. But yeah. let me—I want to say this. Um, the only reason that I just really brought that up on the show, and this is for all the fans that be trying to come for me. Uh, the only reason I brought that up on the show, on the episode, was to show that I was a friend to you, even though you were acting the way you were acting towards me. Mm -hmm. I still sent my friend slash client. To you, yeah, and you just so happened to do that act. So it wasn't me. It it was a kiki. It was a joke, but it was still to show that, hey, like if I if if I had an issue with you, I wouldn't I wouldn't have sent my friend my client slash friend to you mm -hmm. because I was styling her that night yeah. for the event where I met Reese at. Right. So it's just crazy how that all happened yeah, and how that all came back mm -hmm. because, um, that was that was the event that you know I met him at and. That was the night that he had did that, you know, and it was just crazy. Okay, well, there's there. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up too because I forgot to bring it up when I did my recap on the show. Um, I think Thursday night. Okay, so I saw in the comment the comment section is the devil. Uh, every um, I try to stay away from it. It's the devil. I try to stay away from but it. But I'm gonna bring this up because I agreed with you, but I saw that a lot of gays were upset about the comment that you made mm -hmm. in the green screen. And it was mainly because you said, I don't hang with punks, most of my friends are straight, I don't really hang out with gay guys. I didn't feel like, you know, you know, I've been receiving a lot of heat for that. Most people, and I'm going to say this, I might get some heat from saying, for saying it, but most people in our community are overly sensitive, they're hypersensitive, they take everything so personal. Because I've been you know, called out at times. Not even, not in front of the camera, but behind the camera as far as, like, people that know me personally. Like, if I say, well, most of my friends are straight. I only hang out with, like, a select few of gays, which I do. I do have a group of gay guys that I hang out with because right. they've known me for years. It is hard in our community to try to make friends because in, me personally, when I go to gay clubs, I don't even feel comfortable there. Mm -hmm. Like, when I go to a gay club, they, they're staring me down, they're sizing me up, they're, they're whispering, you know, you can have on the baddest outfit, it's nice hair energy. energy. Yeah, it's always, Sometimes. so I've never felt, you know, connected to the gays, which is why uh, I was having a conversation with Tony from your show because I was trying to get him on here too. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, my Chase in Dallas is not going to get any not much views because my following, I don't have a big gay following. Most of my following are women. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect most people to see the recaps. But it just intertwines with my real life. I don't have a gay following on YouTube and I don't really have many gay friends in real life. So when I saw people coming at your neck about that comment, mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I don't think, you know, if people will want to say you're internalized, you're internally Self -hating. Yeah, homophobic. I heard about that. So how do you feel about that? Because I don't see that. I feel the same way. I honestly felt you when you said that. Right. So I just wanted to give you the chance to, yeah, to say what definitely. you definitely about that. Well, when I said that, that was me saying that stereotypical... You, so I say this sometimes, you know, not all women, but you know how gay guys can be catty and mm -hmm. jealous-hearted and, and just real weird with you just because you a fly bitch. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's similar with, with me being friends with mostly females. That's something that I've seen, you know, with females. Females have that same, like, cadence. Oh, she cute. I don't like her. Oh, she did stuff yeah. like that. And it, it's kind of the same with gays. So when I was saying that, it was like, I don't really hang with punks. I don't hang with that stereotypical, jealous-hearted, 
I don't want to say over the top because I'm over the top, but just that 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 extra extra, just not. <laughs> I can't really put words on it. It's really you have to. I can only speak on me, like yeah. in in my in my experiences and my experiences of trying to befriend other gay males. It never works out because it's jealousy, it's envy, it's just plain right messiness that really you know if it doesn't really involve them or me they'll bring it to me and stuff like that and it's just it's always been weird mm -hmm. so that's what i was speaking on but i love being gay i'm lgbtqiaapqrs <laughs> whatever else leathers like I, I live for the community like no i'm not homophobic i've been gay my entire life i've never been inside of a closet or a box so yeah, Please, I just, don't get that twisted. I wanted to give you the opportunity to talk about that because that's the first thing I, I forgot to talk about yeah. in my recap. Oh, no, I just, so I'm like, I don't hang around. I like most of my friends are straight. Like, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was saying that because also I said that because I was getting to know Tony at the time as a friend. And I was saying, this is why I don't get to know motherfuckers mm -hmm. in this lifestyle because such and such, such and such, such and such, like you know how I explained on the show, and that's understandable. I I agree one hundred percent with that because you know when I saw that I'm like you know internal homophobia blah blah blah. You know now when you when you make a statement and people don't understand it and they're so sensitive to it they want to. And it's just like not every it. straight guy hangs out with every type of straight guy. Not every straight female hangs out with every type of straight female. So not every gay or lesbian. Or transgender person is gonna hang out with that same type of person as a friend. Yeah, that's you just know? like how that's just like with females. You know, sometimes females say, "Oh, that's why I don't hang out with bitches." Does yeah, that, does that exactly. mean that they, that they are anti-feminist? Yeah, no, like you know. So it's just like stop trying to label me as something that I'm not. Like y'all know what the hell I was saying. <laughs> Period. Okay. Um. For those. Okay. Now, are you single? I'm definitely single. Um, I am talking to someone. Um, we're taking this. We're taking this slow. We want it to be organic, but I I do claim that I'm single. But I am getting to know one guy. Okay. This. Which is which is a, which is different for me. You know, <laughs> it's with reasons. You're fine. I don't want to give anything away that's going to come out on the show yet. Oh, okay. You'll 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 see why. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we go. Um, let everybody know what you have going on and where they can find you at and everything else. Yes, so um, I am head fashion stylist for a fashion show coming in October, October 26th at the Lofty Spaces here in Dallas, 8 p.m. Uh, the name of the show is Urban Renaissance. Um, it's put on by the Elite of Dallas. They're a brand new up and coming company in Dallas here who reached out to me. The show is going to be given back to charity uh, for disabled children. Um, and things like that. So it's formal attire. So I'm head styling that. I'm super, super, super excited. I also have some prominent um, Dallas locals who have reached out to me to get some styling um, for like some shoots and stuff like that. So I'm just working. I'm just grinding. I'm just hustling. Yes, I still work. I have two nine to fives, <laughs> but I'm still chasing my dream because I don't want to work for the rest of my life. I do just want to wake up and have clients lined up at the door of the style. So until then, I'm going to just keep working my jobs, doing my King Kane shit, and doing me. Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Cedric Kane, C-E-D-R-I-C-K-C-A-I-N. On Instagram, C Kane, C-C-A-I-N underscore stylist. All right, well, I'm happy that you came. Right, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited. so happy. Oh, oh, wait, I brought you something. Oh, what you brought Damn, you? I brought you a gift from my clothing line. You're skinny, so I figured, <laughs> <laughs> I figured, oh, you yeah, this is like something fit wear. It's from, I know it's false when it comes, it's going to get chilly. And I have some homework for you. The cross means something. Okay. But I want you to go to my website and find out what the cross means. Okay then. Okay. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. And this is King Kane. And this is Unfiltered. And we out of here, y'all. Talk to you later. Don't want a project. Don't want no project. Just being direct. Like my ex. I don't want a reject.